Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, welcome back for another video. We're going to go back to a Vesta tutorial today. Um, I am currently writing up some functions in Python for our Hartree Fock program, so that's going to be coming out, uh, I don't know, sometime in the near future. Uh, also, I'm working on the DFT slides, but I uh, figured I'd do some Vesta stuff today to get you some material out uh, in a timely fashion. So today we're actually going to be making a quantum dot and putting ligands on it. Now, when you put ligands on a quantum dot, you have to know how many ligands to put on. And in order to do that, you have to know the amount of charge you need to quench, the amount of excess charge. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a cadmium sulfide quantum dot and add ligands onto it. So in a previous video, I made a cadmium selenide quantum dot that had a lot of extra cadmium atoms. So you need a lot of ligands. I think it had 20 plus char excess charge, so you need 20 ligands. Here, what we're going to do is make a smaller quantum dot with a smaller excess charge, so you only need a few ligands, but it, it, it will equally show the concept of how you do this. So you, I have my cadmium sulfide uh, unit cell here. I have the, the hexagonal unit cell. I'm gonna go to edit, edit data unit cell. Okay, and I'm gonna just expand the cell three by three by three. So yes, now it's very important here that you press this middle button, search atoms in the new unit cell and add them as new sites. So it updates the positions so you don't have to save it to update. So press OK. Apply. OK. OK, so here's updating them all. Now we have 108 atoms. Then I'm going to go to Edit Bonds. I'm just going to delete the, the current cadmium sulfide bonds. Press Delete. OK. Uh, I'll press C to look down like this. Now what I do here if I want to build a quantum dot from this is I go to Structure Parameters from Edit. And I actually add a new atom. Now the atom I like to add is a strontium atom. So this label here is just saying it's the first strontium. Then I put it, at, I place it at the center of my cell. So these are all kind of fractional coordinates. So, oh, which is very convenient. So I put all of these as a half, and here shows up the strontium atom. Now select OK. All right. Now what we do is we go to Edit Bonds, and we're going to draw bonds from from strontium to uh, cadmium. So we're going to search A2 bonded to A1, not add. And we'll just make it small, so we'll make our radius about six. Okay, so here it drew it to all the cadmium atoms. Now we'll do the same for the sulfur for six. Okay, now select okay. Now I go to polyhedral, so it sort of fills these in. And what we now do, what we now do is we delete all the atoms outside. Okay, so it's just the simple procedure that we we had last time, just a little smaller. Okay, and then you have to sometimes rotate to see some non-bonded atoms. Okay, so once all the other atoms are no longer in there, we're going to save it. So we're going to File, Export Data. We're going to export this as a cadmium sulfide a quantum dot. Okay, save. Do not save the hidden atoms. If you save the hidden atoms, it'll save all the atoms you just deleted. Okay, now let's go ahead and open it up because there's a final step. Uh, yeah, in our structure, we have to delete the strontium atom that was in the center. And we also have to delete some non some non-bonded atoms so that are not like in this sort of cage-like structure. So we'll go ahead and delete these. Okay, now let's overwrite that. So file, export data. We're just gonna overwrite our quantum dot file. So let's reopen that up. Okay, here, here's our cluster. Uh, you know, th this is just a small cluster of cadmium sulfide. Uh, now what we do is we go to our text editor and we're going to go to this file I made called compute charges. Okay. Now, here's how I have it set up. So this first row is our atom types. So cadmium and sulf sulfur. Now I have this next row. It's this native charge. This is the sort of oxidation state. So, you know, cadmium is plus two and sulfur is minus two. Okay. Now for the atom count. Let's go ahead and go into our cadmium sulfide file. There's 32 atoms. The amount of cadmium we have is 3 to 19. So 19 minus 3 is 16, plus 1 is 17. Okay, so there's 17 cadmium. And we knew there's 32 atoms. So 32 minus 17 is 15 sulfur. Okay, so the total charge here is going to be 2 times 17, which is plus 34. And for sulfur, it's going to be minus two times 15, which is minus 30. So the excess charge in our system now is uh, plus four. And now the, the reason why this is important is because 
with your excess charge, uh, what will happen is uh, if you have a lot of excess charge in your system, the if you go and do an electronic structure calculation on this system, what it will do is it will actually do a charge zero. So if you you have to specify charge when you do an electronic structure calculation. And if you just and if you have excess charge in your system, like here we have plus four, but then you go do the electronic structure calculation without specifying excess charge, it'll assign the total charge to be zero. And the way it does this is it changes the oxidation states. So it'll basically make this cadmium and sulfur, maybe this will like plus 1.7, and this will be like, you know, minus 2.3, and it'll make it so the excess charge is zero. And when it does this, what will happen is in your and your, uh, your your band gap will basically be like this. Let's say this is your HOMO, and then this is your LUMO, okay? Uh, what will happen is it'll this will end up changing your Fermi energy. So normally your Fermi energy is here, okay? What will happen is it'll put your Fermi energy sort of in the LUMO, okay? And uh, this basically is wrong, and this, this is what happens when you have the excess charge and you don't account for it. So just to summarize, if you have excess charge in your system, uh, what will happen is uh, when you go and do an electronic structure calculation of this, you know, the electronic structure calculation will actually interpret it as charge neutral, and it will do this by changing these native charges. Okay. So if you want to keep these native charges, then you have to quench this excess charge. And the way we do that is by adding ligands. So how I add ligands into here is I use this software called iQmul. You can literally just Google download iQmul and it's very self-evident how to do this, how to download it. So once you have it downloaded, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the cadmium sulfide quantum dot file. Now, sometimes when I open these up in iQmul, it doesn't perceive the bonds correctly. So in this case, you'll have to redraw the bonds. Okay. And I may make future tutorials on how to use the software, but this should be self-sufficient a little bit. Okay. So right now, if I click this button here, select mode, uh, and I click this white atom, you can see down here in the corner that this is a cadmium atom. Okay, so I have an excess charge of plus four, and so I want to quench or bond four ligands to cadmium atoms. It doesn't really matter much, just kind of make sure they're spread out. Um, it's actually a, uh, a totally different kind of study, you know, where should I add the ligands? It's a kind of big question, but for now, let's just, we're just going to add them sort of equivalently across the quantum dot. So, now, normally, as you all know, cadmium selenide, or cadmium, sorry, not cadmium selenide, cadmium sulfide, or, or cadmium selenide for that matter, will have oleic acid ligands. So if I were to go get an oleic acid ligand, so I go, I go to this add fragment molecule, then I go to fatty acids. I could add an oleic acid right here, but oleic acid is a huge molecule, you know. Um, I don't know what happened. Oh, there it is. Looks like I zoomed in a little too much. Um, oleic acid is a huge molecule and it's not very computationally efficient okay so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, approximate the oleic acid molecule uh, by adding a smaller but negatively charged fatty acid so what we'll do is we're actually going to go up here to um, carboxylic acids and we're going to go to formic acid so it's still got this sort of, you know, carboxylic acid group like the fatty acids do, uh, but here it, it just has a hydrogen instead of, you know, that very long carbon chain in, um, in oleic acid. So we're going to add our four ligands now. And to get the minus charge here, okay, all I do is I'm going to just simply delete this hydrogen atom. So you delete this hydrogen atom and it basically, oh, not, not that one, this one. Let me delete this hydrogen atom. So this is the hydrogen atom bonding onto this oxygen. So you basically broke this bond and the electrons are not on the oxygen. So this has a negative one charge. So now what we do is I'm going to draw a bond from here to cadmium. Okay, so I select cadmium. And then I do this energy minimization. And it kind of is like a like a fishing hook. You can kind of think of it like that. And it basically just sort of hooks it in. Okay, so I've added one ligand. Now let's go ahead and add three more. So I'm going to select this, copy it. I'm going to bring it over to this side. Do the same thing, select my cadmium. Energy minimize it. Okay, very nice. Now let's do this again. 
Um, let's bring it over to here. And then we'll do this one more time. Okay, so very nice. So here is our, our structure basically. We have our four ligands now. This is charge neutral, so to speak. Uh, this should give you much better Fermi energy. Um, it, it should basically take the Fermi energy and put, sort of place it you know, into here. Um, so I'll call it E, this is sort of this new Fermi energy, okay, with the ligands. And so we'll now we'll go ahead and we'll save this. So save as, we'll call it cadmium selenide quantum dot formate ligands. And the reason why formate ligands are probably fine is because the whole oleic acid chain is probably not needed. Uh, what's most important, like the most important part of that whole oleic acid chain is probably just, uh, the fact that it's negative, I think they use the entire chain because it's it makes it soluble in hexane and toluene, you know, kind of solvents for these things. So the, the oleic acid is not so much about the negative charge on the quantum dot, it's more about the fact that it, it makes it more soluble in the solvents these, these quantum dots are dissolved in. Uh, but what, what's important about the oleic acid in, in terms of the photophysical properties of quantum dot is the negative charge. So that's why you can basically just for computational purposes use this formate instead of the entire oleic acid ligand that would be here. So now let's go back to Vesta and open up our quantum dot system. So now here it is with the formate. Now you might notice these little lines here in Vesta. This is showing some sort of electron delocalization uh, I am I am slightly surprised to see that it's on the hydrogen, but I think they just kind of mean it's like over here, right? Because this this is a double bond oxygen, if you recall, on the carboxylic acid. Okay, so now let's go back to our our thing here, and so we added uh, uh, four ligands. Each one had a minus one charge, right? And so that that basically quenched the charge of our of our system. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, so just uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and I will see you next time. Uh, take care, everybody.